Maryland is unique among, you know, each state has its own rules, and in some states it's not even the state that decides, it's a town or a county that decides about what schools are allowed to be open and what aren't. In Maryland, the state decides it. And Maryland was started in colonial times as a, as a refuge for Catholics who were oppressed by the Protestant European, you know, Protestants in England mainly, and they, would, they came and founded, founded Maryland as a place where you could escape religious persecution. And so it's called the Free State. And so they have um, very strict laws protecting religious freedom. And, um, and because of that, the way they have arranged this school thing, there are a lot of churches that start schools, and they have set it up so that if you are not a church school, you have to get licensed by the state of Maryland, and that means that you have to show that you have a sequential and linear curriculum, is what they call it, and you have to you have to issue grades and credits at the high school level. And so we, they were not opposed to us existing, but they were, they said there's no exception, there are no waiver processes. If you want to do something different than that, you have to be a church school, <laughs> and so. And church schools, on the other hand, are completely free to do whatever they want. There are no restrictions, no evaluations, no paperwork. It's, and um, so we at first thought, well, first we said, we don't want to be a church school. We want to be an independent school. And they sort of shrugged their shoulders and said, sorry, there's no exceptions to this policy. And so then we went to the Quakers and we went to the Unitarians. and you know, churches that were sort of liberal-minded and thought maybe we could work with them. And they were kind of open to the idea, they weren't opposed, but um, but they, you know, we realized in talking to them that we would not be a priority for them and that they would be taking a big liability risk and probably get uncomfortable with things like our students going off campus and all those, those kinds of things. And that we would, it would really be an uncomfortable situation to be dependent on a church for our existence. And so we, finally um, decided to become, to start our own church. <laughs> and, and it turned out, again, for the same reason in the state of Maryland, it's um, very easy to start a church. It's a two-page application, and you have to write down the name and address of the church and the people who are in charge of it, and you don't have to go to seminary or anything like that to be, become a, um, to, to lead a church. And so then you, um, you can, um, uh, then you have to say what your creed is, and I think our creed was something to the effect of everybody has to follow their own path in life, and that search for your own path is best done in a supportive community, and which is essentially the philosophy of the school. <laughs> and so it, it um, and then we had to, of course, we couldn't just fill out this application and send it in, then we had to make it real. And so we had to actually have meetings and all of that kind of stuff. And so we, we set it up sort of similarly to the school, which is that, that the, the official church and what it was was sort of an empty container and that as people moved through it that they could create things and have things go on that they found interesting and useful and so so we call them study groups for lack of a better word but we we have this um, our Fairhaven Fellowship has groups that we have a group that gets together to do modern dance we have a group that is a book discussion group we have a music group we have um, what else there was a yoga class for a while Cooperative um, housing group. Oh yeah, there's a co cooperative housing group. There's a um, there's uh, there group. a group of people. A lot of the we seem to have a lot of parents who are healer, you know, alternative medicine people in one way or another, and they had sort of workshop get-togethers to try to to share ideas, um, that kind of thing. And so it's become sort of a way that parents can hook into the school community without being actually on campus during the day and be part of things. And that's been really nice. It's actually turned out to be a nice thing. And then we have monthly, every month we have a parent support group um, for the parents who send their kids to the school, which has been really, really helpful, I think, in keeping parents um, satisfied with what we're doing.